Hey everybody, uh, Iceman50 here. Um, so, uh, I'm going to show you one of the other projects I've been saving parts for. Uh, I told you guys I had a couple of projects um, here. So, um, this one is going to be my handmade uh, 3D printer. So, I'm going to attempt to make a 3D printer from scratch. So I've got some items here. And uh, I think what we're gonna do today is just uh, plug it in, set it up, you know, stuff like that. I got a uh, power cord that we're gonna uh, chop up. I've got my power supply. I threw in the instructions just in case. It's pretty obvious. It's pretty well labeled here. Let me see that. Let me see if I can turn on the uh, light. Doesn't matter. All right. So, uh, so we got our power supply. I got some spare power cords that I'll be using later. So, I bought, <clears throat> um, I bought a, basically, it's like for a RepRap uh, printer, it's, you can see here, that I, uh, uh, um, what I ordered was the Ramps 1.4 with an Arduino Mega 2650 uh, kit. And what it comes with, I think I got this from, um, I might have got this from Banggood. Uh, I used two places, AliExpress and Banggood. So this was only like 40 something dollars. Um, so they give you the, they give you the Ramps 1.4 board, which, you know, actually, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it's a cheap Chinese knockoff clone or whatever, but you know, they give you like your main power connections and then they give you some of the other stuff for like the nozzle and the heated bed and and whatnot and so on here they also provided that's why i got this kit because it's actually pretty cool it um it provided uh drivers i have one two three four I think one, two, three, four. So I got four drivers, which, you know, I probably only need uh, X, Y, and Z. Oh, and then I need extruder. So that's four. So that's good. Then they gave us end stops. So you can see here, there's like a switch on a, on a circuit board. Um, and then it's got some wiring. And uh, yeah, it's just, you know, so we can like mount this. So it's a little end stop. They give me one. Two, three, four, five. They gave me six of those. Okay, so that's good. And then it's weird. The kit came with this is for the display. This is like a dual ribbon adapter. Um, it goes so there was one part of this kit was also they gave me a display too. That's what I said. This thing came with a bunch of stuff. So here's the display. Right, it's got the button. This is just like my other one on my tarantula. Um, you know, not anything special. It's a, it seems like a nice uh, display here. So this this is where you hook up the two cables. Um, I've got those right here. They sent me two cables that plug in, and then this goes back um, to the ramp board, um, but it doesn't connect well. So, okay, let me show you. What they also sent me was a Chinese knockoff Mega 2650. Uh, this is a clone. And it says, Hecho in China. Right? So, um, anyways, what I was reading and people were saying that, like, this needs some kind of, like, special Chinese driver. 
you know, otherwise you can never program it or whatever. And I was like, oh, that kind of sucks. But so I went on um, Amazon and I, I scoured Amazon. So I'm like, okay, I need, I'm just going to get another one also. So I got a Elegoo Mega 2560 R3. Now, the reason I picked this one, this was, and this was only like 15 bucks. Um, the reason I picked this one is because I read through the comments and they said, you didn't need any special Chinese drivers to, uh, to get this working. So I was like, you know, I mean, I get that it's a Chinese knockoff, but, um, you know, if they made it right, then we don't have to worry about that. So, um, this one, this one's pretty sweet. Um, I opted for the, the black edition. So, uh, anyways, um, the, uh, what's interesting is that, you know, you got your ramps board here and the, uh, the board that it came with, the other one, there it is, um, the board that it came with, so what you want to do is, you know, there's, there's a row of pins here and there's pins everywhere. So the USB and the power connections kind of come out on the same side. So you want to, you know, set this down and you're going to want to, uh, let's see here. Oh, is it this way? Uh, I think maybe it's this way. So you go to, you know, kind of put this on there. It, it, it does fit. But it feels like like something's out of whack over here. Um, when I tried this yesterday, just to fit it up, you know, I uh, this one seems to fit way better. Oh, you know, I didn't even notice that. Look on this one. So it's got all sorts of stuff on here. Look at the connector. Can you see that? It actually tells you what they all are on the side of this uh, header. Um, and look, even on, even on these sides, oh, wow, look, it even says like analog in, let's see if I can zoom in on this. Yeah, look, this board is pretty cool. I can't lie. Look, power, power reset. Look, for the money, you know, for 15 bucks, look, communication. Okay, so you compare this, let me uh, zoom back out here. You compare this one to this one, and you know, there's no writing on this. Uh, this definitely looks more quality. So anyways, I, I, th I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with this one, um, the black one, the Elegoo. Um, so uh, what we're gonna do here, let's make sure we get all our, Okay, so this is what came with the kit. And, uh, so anyways, I was telling you about this display adapter. And, you know, this the SD card goes in here. This is, it really is just like my one at home. And I printed a box, uh, a 3D printed box for that one, and I mounted it. Um, so anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to set aside our one that came with the kit. So now... These two mate together, right? Like I said, um, these mate together, right? Kind of like, kind of like this. But you gotta get them lined up. You can see that, you know, some of the pins, like, don't go all the way over there, and that's, that's okay. That's serial clock and serial data in there, so apparently that's not needed. But this one, this one seems to fit really nice into the headers. See, it's, everything seems to fit together pretty nice. So, you know, here's, here's the brains of your 3D printer, a 20, an 8, uh, 18 mega 20, 2650, 2560, sorry. And the ramps 1.4. And then you've got, like I said, all your little, all your little modules. Now, these come with 
You see that little potentiometer, that little silver thing on the right? I can point to it right here. Um, from everything I learn, you know, you can put these in backwards in here. There's, there's no polarity or anything. And, you know, people were saying if you put them in with the little potentiometer towards all the screw connections, you blow them up. They're meant to be, you just remember, the potentiometer points away from all the electrical connections here, right? So, anyway, so, but then this, it's funny, they gave me two of these. One came with the screen, and then one was in the box. Here, you can see, I, I, I got two of them. I don't know why they gave me two, but obviously you can only use one. So, what you do, again, it's kind of neat. All this stuff stacks on here, so you can see that, you know, you just... I'll get in and then oh this you know yeah see this this header is kind of tight too um kind of there we go you can see the ever so slightest bend here it's it's kind of doing this to kind of meet over here. it'll still work it's fine but then see so then you know the cables run from here over the display, and uh, I think we can. So, you know, th there's two ways these cables can go. I always do it so that it's either convenient, like it's coming out the side here, or you see if you turn this around, since it is keyed. See these? These have a key on them here, right? Right? Right here, that piece of plastic. It only goes in. It only goes in one way. So it either goes in like this and so you can see that the cable comes out to the to the right or if you turn it around and see there there's the, the the polarizing part of the plug it goes this way so you know do you do you really want it coming across all your all your stuff I don't I don't I don't know I don't think so but what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna make it so that everything comes off from the right it's weird even though I'm left-handed I still <laughs> still we'll put things to the right this is the way I am all right so you can see that yeah, move this a little bit move all our stuff here some of these it does it does matter which which one they go to um, if it doesn't work I think you just flip them because it was the same it's the same thing with my with my uh, tarantula so you can see that we got our our stuff set up here right and then this stuff is labeled over here it's like plus minus plus minus they give you four connections and then this other stuff. So really, we're really gonna be worried about here and then wiring up the power supply. And we're just gonna do this today to test. I'm not gonna, I'm just showing you what we're, what we're doing. Um, so we've got our, okay. And then <laughs> it never gets old. Um, Yeah, I was watching the latest uh, Ben Hack hacks, and he was talking about the AVR Tiny, whatever it is, it's a two one two or something. It's like a tiniest little Atmel chip. Um, actually, pretty cool. Um, they did like a cool project. Of course, the first thing he always does is um, try to create video. <laughs> so he's basically bit. Here's the here's the the wall end. We're gonna cut off the uh, IEC end here. See everybody, I'm wearing the uh, the wrist brace. It's like armor. It's just to keep my wrist from bending. It works out awesome. I mean, it, I've had this for a long time, but uh, I, I know I keep telling you guys that I have carpal tunnel issues. It's only really my right hand. It's funny because I'm left-handed, but I 
pretty much ambidextrous, so I use both hands. So it does get annoying. Um, okay, so we're gonna, I'm gonna cut this off. And, and then, <laughs> I just can't help but keep saying it. Um, so very gingerly, we're going to perform <laughs> like a coroner now. We're gonna perform the, uh, the autopsy. We're, we're going into the chest, we're splitting it open. That's always the problem with this stuff you can't see. All right, hang on a second. Let me grab my uh, x-ray goggles. All right. Obviously, you guys can tell I'm at, I'm at work here. This is my workbench. I don't have static med at home, although I should probably get one. I don't know. It just gets dirty, like you can see. It's kind of gross. I don't really care for it. I mean... It's necessary for certain things, right? But uh, not always necessary. It just collects dirt and whatnot. Ooh. <laughs> Today's a lesson, kids. Don't drop an X-Acto knife on your junk. <laughs> uh, okay. We're trying to just cut through it without cutting into the actual conductors, right? There we go, see? So I just gingerly splaying it open here. And we're gonna we're gonna give ourselves a generous amount. I mean a little bit. Okay. Alright. So I, this, apparently I forgot my uh, memory card for the Osmo action camera. So, uh, we're doing it this way today. I kind of like this anyways. Um, with the phone, I'm using the gimbal. Not the one-axis gimbal. My, <laughs> my actual DJI gimbal. Because, um, you know, I could, like, you know, let's say I put my hand here and I, I click this. Uh, see, now it's in follow me mode. It's confused. It doesn't know. Um, which is funny. Come on back this way. Uh, okay. Oh! Hey, look around my room, everybody. Okay. Alright. So, anywho, um, we got this. And then... <laughs> Uh, oh, I can tell you guys, one movie you don't ever want to watch, it actually made me really mad, um, was uh, Million Dollar Baby. I know that movie's really old. I, I never watched it. And uh, my wife was like, oh, let's watch Million Dollar Baby. And I'm like, oh, it's some kind of boxing movie, right? And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, all right. And uh, I'm watching the movie, and you know, of course, Clint Eastwood's in it, so that's good. And Morgan Freeman. I like those guys. And uh, I guess it's it's the swank. Hillary Swank. Uh, she ain't my... I ain't all about her. But uh, anyways, I, you know, I, I'm i watching it. And they get to this part, you know, and she's, she's like... It's kind of like a Rocky story, right? And uh, she's fighting some badass British chick or something. And uh, this chick's known to fight dirty. And uh, she's taunting her, messing with her, you know. She's she's getting some sucker punches in, like, you know, she turns her head and hitting her after the bell. Well, so then, you know, the, 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 the part that I get to, you know, she's looking, she's turning away. The bell's already rung. Clint Eastwood puts the, uh, uh, the bar stool, you know, the little stool in the ring. And he's kind of got it sideways. That's how they get it out of the ring. They slide it, like, in sideways and then tip it up right and then you can sit in the corner well so he's got it laying down and she's turning back to look at him and this this chick just sucker punches her with like a with like a right hook or something and uh, uh 
She falls over and, of course, her neck lands on the chair. She breaks her neck. C1, C2, or C3, all broken. So she's now a uh, quadriplegic. It was at that moment that I, I got really pissed. I was like, how the hell is she gonna come back from a broken neck? You know, I thought this was like an underdog story. Now, you know, it turns out that, you know, yeah, she broke her neck and she made all this money and her family is a bunch of idiots and they're trying to take her money. And then, you know, and the whole time I'm like, wow, like this was actually a good movie. And then they like ruined it. And then they ruined it even more. The end of the movie, she asked, she asked Clint Eastwood to kill her, you know, assisted suicide. And he's like, I can't. And then. I, I don't know, I guess he talked to Morgan Freeman and they both decided that <laughs> he was going to do it. I I don't know. So so uh, they show you in there and he's he's got a needle or something. I, I'm assuming lidocaine. I mean, that seems like it would make sense. He is a trainer. And uh, then uh, he just unplugs her and shoots her up and then, you know, walks out. Nobody sees him. She's dead. And then didn't, they, didn't you get the side shot of Morgan Freeman... Um, creeping in the shadows watching to make sure he did it I guess I don't know I don't know it was like the worst movie ever I, I you know I'm all for like a good comeback story or whatever but you know he just straight up just break somebody's neck and then you know then they're like oh I don't have anything to live for I don't know would not recommend that movie do not let your wife trick you into watching that movie oh it's a it's a sports movie it's a boxing movie I I was depressed after I watched that movie <laughs> everybody so, uh, um, yeah, not, uh, if you don't want to be depressed, uh, then, you know, you don't like movies like that, then you probably shouldn't watch it, right? Um, so, I didn't know till it was too late. Um, you know, so, I got some, some pieces here. We're just gonna, um, crimp on, I think I have... I have like the jankiest set of, <laughs> you can tell my tools are better at home than at work. Oh my God, I can, what's wrong with these? These are messed up everybody. I don't know what's up with them, but we'll try our best. I'll fix it later. And like I said, this is just temporary. Hell, I could even, you know, just screw the wires in, I guess. That way I don't have to crimp anything because uh, I don't really want to do that. Okay. So, it goes earth, neutral, line. So, green, white, black. So, we're going to go green to here. Um, oh, man, if you guys are watching WandaVision, you should definitely... Uh, it's getting real, real good, and uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spoil last week's episode. Um, if you guys are watching it, you, you'll know what I'm talking about. But uh, yeah, they introduced a new character, and uh, that should be interesting. So, but uh, anyways, so. Yeah, I've just been watching a lot of, a lot of YouTube. That's all I really do at home is watch YouTube and come up with ideas on how to make stuff, <laughs> how to make videos. I get bored. It's really a hobby for me. It's fun. So, okay. Now, what do we got over here? Oh. And we got an, a voltage adjustment over here, this little p potentiometer. So we're probably gonna wanna, you know, power this up and we'll check the voltage. We want it exactly at 12 volts. And this is a, um, I got this off of Amazon. This is a uh, 360-12, it's a 110 volt input. Actually, it'll do 110, 220, there's a switch. And then it's 12 volts at 30 amps. Nah, I don't necessarily believe that. This thing was not super expensive. Um, but here you can see there's the 120 220 switch um, you know there's no plugs on it that's why I said wait that's why we had to take a plug and uh, cut it off right so you can see here I, I got that and then 
then I get our our tech meter. I don't like these Textronics meters. They're kind of annoying. I like my good old fluke meters. Um, but I do have these sweet fluke probes. These are these pin probes. And look, you can replace the tips. You can pull them out and you can replace the whole tip. Um, these are not ex not too expensive. I mean, these are, <laughs> I don't know. I guess it depends on your opinion, but these are 70 bucks. These are made by fluke. Okay, these are cat cat three cat four whatever it is uh what does it tell me they're good to a thousand volts uh category three so they're good to a thousand volts right so we'll uh we'll uh plug this thing in we'll pick you up here plug this thing in there you go now you can see we're plugging in back here okay no smoke Oh, look, we got a power LED. Okay. So we're we're lit, everybody. And then I'm just gonna drop you down here again. And then <laughs> uh, I gotta stop saying that. I guess I'm the only one laughing, but uh so uh see this happens all the time. Look, that's why I hate these things. You turn it on. And it automatically defaults to to AC. I swear, you got to push this other menu button, and now it'll be. Look, it's not letting me. You see that? You see that? It's still on AC. It's still saying AC, and you got the little little symbol over here, right? What the hell? Turn this off. Turn this on. It it's. Wow, you said it took like four times of me pushing it for it to switch over to DC mode. I don't know. I, I've used these for a long time. I've had these ever since I worked here. And uh, to me, they're just garbage. I, I like Textronics, but th these things are dumb. I just like, you know, you can set it AC, DC, whatever. The, just quick and easy. I, I like to be pushing menu buttons. That's pretty dumb. Uh, let's see here. Okay. So... Guys, plus V then minus V. Okay, so red on the left, black on the on the right, and there's it looks like there's three connections for each. So we're gonna go to the first one and the first one. Wait, it just switched back to AC. Uh, what the heck is going on? <laughs> you guys see? Okay, let's try in another meter. It's the same crappy meter. <laughs> Look, I, I have two, see? So, I, yeah. Uh, it really makes me wish, miss my, uh, my tech. See, even I'm, I'm saying it, my, my, uh, my fluke meter. There we go, see, now you can see. Now it's sitting there. Oh, what the hell's going on with that other thing? That's pretty lame. Um, all right. So, there we go. And there we go. And we're at 12.2 volts, right? So, uh, what we can do here. Do what I'm doing, guys. Okay, I need like a small screwdriver. Hang on a second. Usually you need like a little uh, standard screwdriver. And that's why I keep one of these around. And it's even got a Phillips on the one end and a standard on the other. So, you, you know, normally you just... You know, let's see. Let's try the Phillips end. Nope. Although it is a Phillips. We just need to get a, sm there we go. Okay, can you see that? All right, so 
here and here. So we're at 11.93, you can see that, right? Money, that's, that's where we're gonna leave it, all right? So we're gonna unplug it, okay? Don't want it, and you gotta wait a second because you know, there is capacitors in here. It probably, there's probably a shunt resistor or whatever, but like, hey, you can see it's, it's still coming down. So there's still some capacitance. There's still some voltage there. Okay, we're down to 100 milli, 150 millivolts. That's not much. Tenth of a volt. Um, thereabouts. So now, um, I use some... Um, RC car wire it's like high strand um, I'll use like for this kind of stuff I use like 10 gauge or 12 gauge probably 12 gauge but this is just some THHN wire this is like electrical house wiring you know it's real stiff and not too many strands but I'm gonna pick this just temporarily that was kind of the whole point was just to show you guys how this all works and uh, hopefully you know everything does work so that when I want to do it for real you know um, but this is the beginning. This is the electronics part of it, right? This is figuring out, you know, ordering stuff and then making sure it works. And so that's what I'm, that's what I'm kind of doing right now. Yeah, this stuff is definitely not ideal for this kind of work, and I wouldn't recommend it. Anyways, you can go to the hobby shop, and it's you can get that high strand count RC car power wire for like a dollar a foot, for like a dollar a foot you know, probably 12 gauge or something, you know, um, that to me is not expensive. And, you know, I mean, even if you buy, you know, five feet of, of red and five feet of black, that's only $10. So I would recommend that it's very, like I said, it's high strand count, very good. You know, I don't know if you guys know, but you know, I mean, at least what I was taught that, um, the, uh, the, the current flows on the outside of, of, of the actual wires, right? So the, I think they call it the skin effect or whatever. So it sits, so the more conductors you have, the more surface area you have of the conductors, right? So um, higher strand count is always better. Um, you know, it's not just about, you know, the, the wire and, uh, um, you know, how big the actual wire itself is. The, uh, okay, so I don't I don't know if I really want to jam those in there, but what I do have is we got to use the uh, the yellow ones. Will these fit in here? Yeah, see that's always the problem with these these yellow forks. They're kind of wide and they don't want to fit down in the in the channel here. Uh, I think maybe we just won't use those. I'll just do my best. Just <laughs> rammer home. Okay. All right. So now we got our, our red wire, and then we can come over here. I could have used some totally smaller wire um, for this because we are just testing it. You know what? I don't want to, let's see, well, let's see what it looks like here. Um, okay, so we can pull, pull these off temporarily, right? and then, yeah, you can see it doesn't, uh, doesn't fit, it doesn't fit, you must have quit, everybody. <laughs> uh, Okay. They see they ship them with them all screwed down. So you gotta unscrew them, and when you unscrew them, you can see that the the pin actually drops down. You see that? So here the pin is up and shiny. See that? And then you it's dropping down, dropping down. Okay. 
So I guess we're going to consider this part one of this build um, just for clarity. Oh, and the one cool thing about this is that you can remove it. These are like, uh, these are probably knockoffs, but like Phoenix contact uh, connectors. Yeah. Zong B. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not fitting well. So, um, when I do this for real, you know, I get that other wire, like the 12 or, or whatever, and I put a, I put a ferrule over here. Um, you know, we'll use the gauge wire necessary, but, you know, I mean, some of this stuff doesn't draw a lot of current. I mean, well, when I say not a lot of current, I mean like, okay, it might be drawing five amps or something, but, you know, I mean, you can still put, like, this is good for like, what gauge is this? This is 10 gauge, so this is good for like 20 amps AC. Okay, we we're not gonna we're not gonna need that much, I don't think. Um, but uh, yeah. So I do have. Let me get some wire. So this is perfectly fine to do, everybody, if you just, uh, you know, uh, th again, tiny wire. It's like 22 gauge or something, right? It's super tiny, but it's not, it's fine. We're just going to test it. We're not, we're, curi we're, we're concerned about voltage, not current at the moment. We just want to see everything power up, right? So we're going to strip these, okay, and we're going to. So on this, it's plus, then minus. So it goes plus, minus, plus, minus. So we're gonna take the red and we're gonna go to plus. And again, this is where these little ferrules come in so handy. Uh, I think I have some here at work too. Um, Cause they're just that handy. They make everything clean and nice and a good connection and you don't have to worry about frayed wires or anything. I use them a lot uh, when I'm building this kind of stuff. Okay. All right. So now we're going to take care of the other side. Where did my just throw my, here it is. I got my, we're just going to. I just do this to split the wires very carefully. You don't want to cut into them or anything. I gotta remember to like <laughs> stay on camera here. Um, so, okay, okay. Move this out of the way. Screwdriver. Okay, you can see here. You want me to? Zoom in a little bit here. Okay. So, plus to red to plus. You know, it's whatever you guys want, but uh, I would stick to conventional color unless you don't have that option. But then always please everybody make a schematic <laughs> so that uh, you know what you're doing. If you look, we got our board and we got our power. Now, I don't know if this bottom board is going to power or not. I was confused by that. I, I don't think, I don't know if power passes. I, I don't know what they were saying. So I, you know, that's that's going to be part of the uh, of the mystery here, is uh, figuring out um, uh, figuring out how this is this board is powered I'd have to go back and look through um, maybe there's some information on on Banggood's website maybe not um, so let's just see are there any pin indicators 
Um, you know, one thing that I'm not super thrilled about is that you can see there's like corrosion on this guy. I checked it already. It's, it's on here in a few places. So if this one doesn't work, we got the other one. Otherwise, I'll just take a second. I got this uh, EnviroTech, right? This is just um, defluxer spray. So you would, you know, spray that on here. And then I use just cut down a little acid brush and you just keep going. And then you can clean, you know, just clean, clean off the crap. So if it's really an issue, we'll... Uh, We'll worry about it then. So we've got our, we can move the meter. Uh, stop pushing buttons. Move the meter. Okay. Move everything metal. You can see we got everything. Let's hope that when we plug this in, it doesn't blow up. I don't have any of my drivers installed or anything. Okay, I'm not, I didn't see anything. I did not see anything. So let's move this. Okay. You can see that the power supply was on. So let's try this again. Nothing. Mm. Okay. Well, it's not programmed or anything, but um, I feel like I, I don't know if this ha has to get powered separately or not. I now I need to go back and look. Anyways, I think we'll leave this here. Um, but just showing you how this is basically hooked up, right? And then the, the 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 four stepper motors go in here, and then you know you got your hot bed and you know your heated bed and your extruder set up, and then you got thermistor inputs and all that. So we'll definitely get more depth into that um, at another point. So I'm gonna end this video here, and uh, we'll talk to y'all later. All right? Have a good one. We'll see you. Bye.